Uh, following allegations of a scam in the National Social Investment Program supervised under the office of the Vice President, the Special Advisor to the President on Social Investments, Mary Mowes, is seeking to set the record straight. In a statement, uh, she insists it is untrue that the National Social Investment Program has gulped over two trillion naira since 2016 when it was created. Rather, she says, quote, the actual funds released for the NSIPS between January 2016 and October 2019, when the NSIPS were handed over to the Ministry of Humanitarian Affairs, Disaster Management and Social Investment, amounted to 619.1 billion naira, constituting 36.4% of the total appropriation from the National Assembly. She gives a breakdown of the monies released for the NSIPS as 14.03% in 2016, 35% in 2017, 43.5% in 2018, and 57.8% of the 500 billion naira in 2016 and 400 billion naira appropriated for the subsequent years. Uh, the presidential advisor explains that as of September 2019, the funds had been expended on various initiatives, including job creation, the job creation program, the National Homegrown School Feeding Program, and the uh, National Cash Transfer Program. Well, we'll move on now and uh, introduce our guest uh, such that uh, they can shed some light on all of this that is making the rounds. Well, we do have. Uh, uh, Mrs. Mary Mowes herself, uh, she's a special advisor to the president on uh, social investment. As you can see, she joins us right there from our studios in Abuja. And then the, beside her, Charles Olufemi Folayo, chairman, National Youth Reform Group. And then we'll also do have Honorable Ben Kahlo, who is the chairman, House Committee on Media. Well, ladies and gentlemen, thank you all for joining us today on the program. Let me start with you, Mrs. Uwais. The statement you released yesterday, lots of reactions coming through from this one. So did you get the sense that they were trying to get back at you? Because, I mean, right after the minister uh, appeared in the assembly speaking to the members, we heard her talking about a lot of intrigues. She was trying to understand certain things. And then you know, the speaker, the sen president of the Senate, gave the perspective, then your statement. Did you get the impression that the National Assembly was trying to get back at you, and then you had to release a statement? So good morning. I, I, uh, w thank you for the opportunity to clarify the issues. Um, after the event, I saw online publications and then one or two people who were at the event actually confirmed that that happened. So I felt the need to set the record straight because when you don't wash off mud, it sticks. We didn't spend uh, two trillion. This is what I saw online and, and there was no denial to that. We didn't, I mean, we don't ask poor people to apply online and all of that. So. Um, Essentially, I was trying to safeguard a process that, you know, we've spent four years, that is, the administration has spent a lot of money and effort trying to create a register that has been insulated from a lot of the vagaries. It's been done quietly, but it's being built gradually, and it's still in the process. And I think it's a very critical platform for development. So I was worried that all of that would be thrown away. And the, the other issue, of course, is the fact that developing that register is actually a precondition for the spending of the IDA credit and the funds recovered from the Abacha family. So that was put in jeopardy. So I was, uh, I was concerned and I, I felt that maybe it's, it's best because it was already out in the public domain and I kept getting calls. I've actually left that space. I'm not in the social investment uh, programs anymore, but I just felt, okay, let's just put the record straight for, I mean, those who are reading that um, we've been this excessive or so insensitive to the poor, we need to uh, set the record straight. Uh, it let me it wasn't really about me. It was more about getting the, the, the story out. 
Uh, Honorable Ben Carlo, does the National Assembly understand, or do you understand, why she had to put out the statement? Well, thank you very much, uh, Chamberlain, and uh, thank you, viewers, for tuning in. Honestly, uh, we are not even supposed to be here deliberating on uh, this non-issue. I call it non-issue because uh, this is governance, not personal affairs. The reaction that we got from the officer of government that was in charge of this program was totally uncalled for because we, as the legislative arm, we are here to intervene when we get outcry from Nigerians. For example, when our lady Ada cried about electricity, we invited the uh, stakeholders in the power sector and they obliged today we are having two months free electricity. And they promised that it's going to be more steady. When Nigerians cried about uh, Chinese doctors coming into Nigeria, we invited the people, stakeholders in the health sector, and we interacted for them to give us more clarification. On this issue, Nigerians cried about what is going on with this money that is being distributed. And all we needed to do was to intervene because we are the people's parliament. And what did we do? We invited the officer in charge of that particular portfolio at the moment and had a cordial meeting, a mutual respect-filled meeting, where certain questions were raised with regards to what is the modus operandi you are using for this distribution. Because Nigerians must know at the moment we are not probing anybody. What we are interested in is in COVID. What is Paramount. What is uh, you know, on the table for us now is how do we use legislative intervention to make the executive work better in providing, you know, the, you know in bridging the gap that has been created by this uh, COVID crisis. That is our interest. And as the crisis comes, we relate, we interface, we interact for the purposes of enhancing delivery of service, not to witch hunt. So, the, and I must put, give it, make it clear to the Nigerians that the minister, when she came in, she gave us answers to some of the issues that we raised. We wanted to know more. And she also agreed with us that there are gaps that she made when she uh, you know, got into the office. There are intrigues that she believes that need to be worked on. There are weaknesses that need to be improved on, just like in any system. And she agreed with us also that there is a need to give what is happening now legislative backing like you have it in the Social Security Act in the United States, and you have the Unemployment Insurance Act like you have in the UK and Australia, which they call the Dole. You know, the speaker Michael. mentioned these two particular uh, 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 products of government in these uh, foreign countries. Okay. To Carlo. highlight the point that it is important we, that we give statutory backing to what is being done with this particular So what product. we're going to do, we'll come to that uh, as we progress. Yes, but I just started asking if... Uh, the House or the Assembly understands why she had to put her last minute because she said, look, well, not about her, but she needed to set the record straight. So it's just about issues. But we'll come back to you and get, uh, and as well as uh, Mrs. Gallo to, re um, Mrs. Wei to respond to this matter. But uh, Mr. Folayan, we brought you in because you've got experiential knowledge about how some of these programs should go because there were complaints about desired effects amongst all things. So. Do you understand why all of this is going back and forth, Mr. Falayan? Well, thank you very much, Chamberlain, for having me. Uh, for every Nigerian that has information about social investment program of the government, we appreciate this government for coming up with this idea of social investment. I remember this come from the manifesto of the APC and, of course, be implemented by the government as an intervention program. That's what I, don't want, I want Nigerians to always remember intervention program, which has been on for in the 2016 to date. We must also, you know, appreciate the office that has been supervising this program over the time. Sincerely, this is the first time that Nigeria will be having a program that affects the young people directly without being a politician, without knowing anybody in, in National Assembly to give you a letter. This is the first time that we have ordinary traders on the streets 
haven't benefited directly from the government. This is the first time we have, you know, young people who are in school, children, having, you know, free feed, you know, uh, food from the, from the government in, 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 the, in, the, in terms of the home growth school feeding program. But I want to say this clearly, that some of us that watch this event, I myself as a critical stakeholder in the youth development in the country, and of course, as one of the you know, civil society organizations that has been monitoring this program from inception, we, we are actually shocked over the period, especially since the time the program has been moved to a ministry. We expected that these things will be given you know, more effect. We expected that there will be a build on on what has been happening you know, on the program. The program has not, of course, been implemented perfectly. But I can say that the handlers have been building on, you know, past, you know, errors that have been committed. You know, there was a time National Assembly was talking about, you know, the, the quota system where they said some, some state has a huge number and some state that has a high population does not have a huge number of beneficiaries, especially on Empower. I remember this was addressed subsequently. But what, I'm, what are we are saying is we are shocked that taken to the ministry and then this begin to happen first. The payment for, you know, uh, the empire beneficiaries and some of these things were stopped for like two or three months since they're moving to the ministry. And we were also shocked that the minister came out to say that she doesn't understand some of the aspect of this program. Even after seven months, she has been a minister supervising this program. So these are the issues. And we are looking at it that this is the time Nigeria needs this program most. This is the time people are expecting to really have this impact of social investment in their lives. We must thank President, of course, Establishing the Ministry of uh, Social you know, Development, Disaster Management, of course, and Humanitarian Affairs, even when we are not expecting that we are going to have COVID-19 disasters, we are having it now. This is the time Nigeria wants palliative. This is the right. time Nigeria wants to have more effect of this. You know, we'll get into what should be done, you know, moving forward, how it is being operated now, especially after September when it was moved to the ministry. But I'd like to go back to Mrs. Owais. She, she mentioned something in that statement. In fact, you mentioned a lot of things, a lot of issues were raised. But this particular one saying that the demand for inclusion of candidates to the NSR from the National Assembly has been a recurring issue from the inception of the NSIPs. I just want to clear the air and understand what you mean by that. Are you saying that members of the National Assembly actually approached you to have names put into uh, the social register or what? Well, the... the, the I'm speaking of the period that I was there, right? And it's from the 8th Assembly. I haven't met the leadership of this uh, National Assembly yet, and I must say that I have the greatest respect for many of them. They're very decent gentlemen, but I have had challenges. I have been to the National Assembly numerous times, over 30 times, and this I have been documenting. And uh, I have had challenges with the chairman of the Poverty Alleviation Committees, and this is about, you know, trying to say they, they, they want visibility in the programs. But the way the programs are structured, I was given directives, just ensure that you create a level playing field for all Nigerians, people that don't know anybody, you know. So I kept, you know, trying to um, manage the process. I am sure that many, many government officials have gone through this. And um, it's, it's more or less become the norm. I haven't had, I, I think the only opportunity I had of meeting the, the, the new, at, at the public hearing, but even then we had been deployed to, we had been moved to the, to the humanitarian ministry. So I couldn't even put in a word. Um, the last time that I appeared before the National Assembly, frankly, it wasn't a good experience for me. But you also heard uh, Honorable Carlo say that uh, the minister did tell them that there were gaps, there are weaknesses, there are things that need to be corrected. Could you speak to that? Oh, yes. There's, uh, there's, there's definitely room for improvement. There's definitely room for reform. There are many things that happen in the field that one has no control over. And this is the basic reason why we invited the uh, DSS, the EFCC and the ICPC to see how they can address some of the extortion we hear happens after the beneficiaries get the money. We were trying to ensure that there's, we're able to track and measure everything. I mean, the movement of the funds and everybody's uh, unique number is registered so we know who gets what. We know that there are several things that uh, are structural that we have no control over. 
and we're hoping that they can be addressed. For instance, to open an account in Nigeria, you need um, a phone number. Not many poor people have phone numbers, especially where you don't have light and where you don't have uh, uh, reception. Even where you have light and reception and you have poor people, they're not going to prioritize stopping up the number just to retain it. So there has to be a, a minimum, you know, maybe the NIN number should be the basis for opening an account. We always welcomed, I mean, we have ANIJ, the African Network for Environmental Justice, who have been out there, 700 monitors, trying to see, try, giving us feedback so that we can address the issues. And I, I hope that you will call them and ask them because everything they tell us, we take in and we factor, or this is what used to happen. Now, from September, I really don't know what has happened. I cannot ask, um, answer any questions. And this is, you know, actually, I mean, the slant being given this is not what I expected. I just wanted to set the record straight because we didn't spend that money. We, we weren't insensitive to the realities of our, of our, of our poor people. So many Thank other you. issues to raise, uh, Mrs. Uwes, but let me take this uh, to Honorable Kalu. Well, you mentioned some things earlier that uh, you had a very friendly conversation uh, with the Ministry of Humanitarian Affairs and all, and you got some information. Um, but then you also said that there were some gaps. Uh, what were these gaps that you found out in your conversation with the minister, and what's the plan to fill them going forward? No, I, I didn't say that we found out there were gaps. I said that she confirmed that there are areas that need improvements. There are weaknesses that need to be worked on, just like any other system. And that was why the speaker proposed that it is good to have a legal framework, just like any of all these products in other con countries of the world. And I want to put one fact clear. Uh, the letter that is circulating around painted the National Assembly as saying that this program was a failure. It is not true. That never took place in that uh, meeting. This letter circulating around painted the National Assembly as saying that it was a scam. It is also fake news. It didn't happen in that room. So the aspersion that the letter casted on the integrity of the National Assembly is what got us worried because uh, Madam Ways was not in that room when this meeting took place. So to depend on newspaper publication and react based on newspaper publication, I don't think that is very fair to the National Assembly. All we said is that we are faced with a crisis and intervention programs, just like my colleague here said, from the civil society. We're supposed to feel the impact now. The poorest of the poor should feel the impact of these intervention programs. And if there is any complaint, we have to intervene. And that was what we did. And we called the minister in charge. We didn't call her to come into the room because she has handed over that portfolio to who is handling it now. And if there is supposed to be any reaction, it's supposed to come from the minister that interacted with us. So I want to uh, make this clear so that Nigerians will know that this is, that actually did not take place. Now, uh, I had her say, uh, members of the National Assembly, that they wanted to be part of it. Of course, why not? We can speak all the grammar and all the theories about this program if it doesn't trickle down to people benefiting from it visibly. It doesn't make sense. You say you, you shared money recently, and I represent a constituency. And there are 360 of us. And all of them are saying, we are not feeling the impact. We are still spending personal money, making transfers every day to the poorest of the poor. Who are you paying this money? Where is the register you are using? How did you compute that register? Where are you publishing it? What is difficult in publishing those that you are paying in the, at the local government? If this uh, money was Honorable distributed Carlo, to the local... My apologies. Ju just to jump in before we uh, get to uh, Mrs. Uwais and then Mr. Uh, Falayan. Does that then mean that the House or the National Assembly wanted to choose the people who will be on the program? That's part of what the letter said. No. We are not saying that National Assembly should choose those who will be on the program. But if we have recommendation to make, 
Why not if it is in line with their criteria? Why not and if not? We are representing the people. We are saying, you say you paid 100 people from my constituency. We can't see them. Are they ghosts? Show say us it, the Honorable Kalu. Let us see the list. That Honorable Kalu, one go. moment. Just one moment. Are you saying that you want to recommend a list of people for the, uh, f to benefit from the program? I didn't get that. Are you saying that you wanted to recommend a list of people that should benefit from the program in your different community, in your different constituencies? No, that is not that is not what I'm saying. I am saying that the program now, is supposed to be more aligned with their regular. You said now that if it aligns, one moment, one, one moment, Honorable Kalu, one moment. You said if yeah. it aligns yeah. with their with their with their program, if it aligns with their uh, modus operandi, that it wouldn't be a bad idea to make recommendations to them. That's what you just said. That what I didn't I didn't get you is fine. You said it wouldn't be out of place for you to make recommendations to them if it aligns with their modus operandi. That's what you just said. That is not what I said. I said that if the representatives, you know, have recommendation to make because I come from a, a place I represent, and if I have a, 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 a document saying that I have paid 1,000 people from my constituency and I'm not seeing them, the local government chairman is not seeing them. At the world level, they are not, the traditional rulers are not seeing them. The youths are not seeing them. Are you paying ghosts? That is the question we are asking. Public let us see. What very register quickly. are you using? When did you okay. raise this register? How okay. long is it? Are we supposed to amend the register? How One many moment. people has this One particular moment. intervention lifted One moment, from Honorable poverty Kalu. to... One moment, one moment. Let, let's take this to uh, Mrs. Ways. Uh, one of the issues that's been raised clearly, you may want to react to some of the things that you have heard him say, but the critical issue that's been raised here is the way and manner in which the lists of the poorest of the poor have been raised. You talked about that as well, that it was covert, and consequently it's kind of um, shady to, to them. How do you react to that? Well, I, I wouldn't say it is shady. What we've tried to do is to insulate the development of the register from the usual vagaries that we see in the public space. So what we do is we train personnel in the ministries of planning of each state, or what, when I was there, and, they, and also train people in the local governments. They go into the communities and they hold focus group discussions with the people. I'll be surprised if the traditional rulers say they don't know anything about this. You know, they have focus group discussions. They tell us who the poor are. They define what the parameters for poverty is. In, um, are in, the, in those communities and they tell us which households and then we visit each and every household that is signed off by the community. The enumerators go there and they look for certain indicators. We want to know the size of the family. We want to know the assets. We want to know gender. We want to know if they have persons with disability. There are a whole lot of issues that we're looking at. It is entered on a tablet that has a proxy means testing formula. All of that information is hosted in every state, um, what we call the SOCO, State Operations Coordinating Unit. They now send the data to the National, uh, National Social Safety Net Coordinating Office. So what we've been doing is actually even um, without any input from the governor, we work with civil servants and local government staff we, we haven't worked with the uh, ministers. We just work with the people that are in the community. Now, to the issue of we should publish the list, the, I think it's section 14 of the FOI Act that says people who receive social grants should not be published or disclosed without pre-consent. So this is why, because we also train local government staff who visit them every week to support them on financial literacy, how to form savings groups, how, I mean, more about nutrition, um, uh, so many things, give them confidence, life skills. Those people, we call them community facilitators. Those people are on our website. The name, the ward, the local government, and their phone numbers, those people can be reached there are many investigative journalists that have gone out. There are many, you know, monitors that have gone out 
We don't give the list. It's too, I mean, I feel that it would be irresponsible for us to display names of people that, uh, there are people in this, in, this, in this country who will argue that, no, I'm not poor. I don't like that. Uh, it's, we've come across that. I don't like that label. It's unfair for us to go out there and give their names. But if you want to find them, it's very easy because the information of those who can lead them, who can lead you to them, is in the public domain. It's on All right, website. Mrs. Weiss. And this right. is what I we'll, put in the letter. We'll come back to this. Uh, Mr. Falayan, don't worry. We've not forgotten you as well. But we'd like to also let people out there know, join the conversation. This is about you. This program is designed to benefit you. So... Let us know what you think about it. Speak to the issues if you don't mind. We're back in a moment. Stay with us. Welcome back to Sunrise Daily. We're just taking a look at some of the issues making the rounds about the uh, social investment fund, uh, COVID-19. Lots of talk about stimulus package. Uh, don't forget that free electricity proposal, which we hope to broach before we end. But let's get back to Mr. Charles Folayo on this matter. You did make reference to the minister not having implemented the project perfectly, not getting certain things right. Are you talking or challenging the way she's carrying out this, her duties as though she trying to understand what's going on and implement it? What exactly is your point in that regard? Well, that's, that's exa exactly my point because uh, the minister, you know, made some self-indicting statement at uh, the National Assembly. First, by saying that there's some aspect of this program that she doesn't understand. For Nigeria, you know, it looks like you gave somebody a vehicle to drive, and you were saying that you don't understand the brakes, you don't understand the gear. You know, it makes you can't drive this vehicle. But in other ways, what I'm saying is that the, the aspiration of President Mamadou Buhari to actually institutionalize this program is not being fulfilled because we, it's like we are in a reverse gear of the program. What do I say by this? While the program was still under the supervision of the presidency, uh, we're already feeling the impact, so to say. We're only expecting that this impact, you know, we increase. The number of people ben benefiting from this program, we increase. We're expecting it that when it goes to a ministry, it's going to now be, of course, totally institutionalized. We're even expecting that the National Assembly will make, you know, a, you know, a law that will back this program. So it becomes like, you know, an agency under the ministry or possibly becoming, you know, a department, you know, under, under the ministry. This is our expectation. But unfortunately, what we are having, like I mentioned earlier, is that the minister took over. First, is that about two, three months salary were not paid for the beneficiary, which they have not experienced before. You know, that just shows that we're on reverse gear. Secondly, some of this program actually stopped. The minister came to say she doesn't understand. She has said it on several occasions that she's still trying to study the files. And I said, like, this, is, this is seven months. You know, to, to her having taken this program in the last seven months, I think seven months is too much for a minister to study an, a program of this nature, especially when we have people that has been implementing this program in the time past. You could see, you know, when it was under presidency, there are a lot of people, aside even Mrs. Uwes, there are a lot of also people that are working with her that your Nigeria will tell you they are very brilliant. They've been trained about these programs. They're already implementing the program very well. Yes, we're having complaints because this is the first time we're introducing social investment program in Nigeria. So there will be issues that, will, of course, that will be addressed. But as time goes on, we find that this thing is going back as if we have not even been doing it before. And that is why we're caught aback or shocked when you see the minister coming to say she's still trying to study this program. So I think. And like most people are thinking out there, that the challenge this program is actually having is because there is a disconnect between the, the, the structure that has been laid for this program and the minister, or probably the minister wants to come with a new structure, which I think will backfire, or is backfiring already, because if you are coming with a new structure for a program that's already running, you're going to have issues. And for National Assembly, you know... Uh, you know with Mr. Falayan, can I just know, ask you, can uh, I just quickly butt in, if you don't mind, Mr. Falayan? This one is also to you as well. Um, in your opinion, and from what you have seen so far, uh, and from the perspective that the legislature is having, do you think that the legislature understands the way this program is running for them to have raised the issues that they have raised so far from where you stand? Yeah, yeah basically, I, I would not say that 
the legislature don't understand the way the program is being run. You know, why do I say this? There has been chairman house committee and chairman senate committee on poverty alleviation that has been supervising. You know, of course, it is the oversight function of National Assembly to look into every program of government. But this does not mean that National Assembly does not have, you know, a right to, to raise issues if they feel that there are issues they need to know, which they have done rightly. But I think the problem there, if the National Assembly said they are not aware of it, you know, maybe Madam Wales has mentioned some things uh, why she was stuck in, which I also know that uh, as uh, somebody who has been, you know, conversant with National Assembly members, you know, they are more concerned about their constituents. You know, they are talking, it's always about our constituency. But you also know that there are constituents within the constituencies, uh, which the National Assembly members also have an interest on them. That's, that, you cannot take that out. But why I'm not saying that this is why they are saying what they are doing, they have right to ask questions. But when they ask questions, my concern was that the minister would presenting over the issues, I was not giving them the right answer to their questions. That was what I observed because I've gone through the video time again, you know, over and over again. I wouldn't expect a minister to tell National Assembly members sitting in front of you that this program, I don't understand this, I don't understand that. It's not their business. So, so the does that then mean... Stand up from this statement to pardon me, let me put this in. Does that then mean that what you're trying to say is there are intrigues going on in that ministry of which, uh, who knows, some people have been caught up in that, in, in the ministry. Is that part of the point you're trying to make? If you say there are interests going on in the ministry, I will not be able to say that because I'm not working with the ministry. But the minister says she doesn't understand this. This is the point that I'm trying to make. First, this is my recommendation because Nigerians need this program right now. People are on lockdown in their various houses. People need the palliative measure of the federal government. If the minister cannot implement this right now, maybe we should give her more time to study this program, quickly take back this program to the office that was supervising it, so this program can continue. And then when she thoroughly understands the, the implementation strategy of this program, then we give it back to the minister. We cannot say that, I cannot come here and say there are, are intrigues in the ministry. Maybe the minister has a lot of things going on she wants to explain to National Assembly member during the oversight function, Please, she has every right to do that. And National Assembly has right to ask questions if they don't understand. And that is just the basic about it. But what well, we let's, are saying right now, let's in this time of COVID, Nigerians are at home. Nigerians mm. need government intervention. And if this ministry is yet to understand the program, they should kindly return it back to the place that was supervising the program. Let the supervision continue. Why the National Assembly work on, you know, modality structures to implement this, I mean, to institutionalize this program. Okay, as, let, let's speak agency, to a member of the National Assembly because you've mentioned the National National Assembly a uh, number of times. Uh, Honorable Kalu, uh, you, i first like you to respond on one hand to what he just said, saying that, well, maybe this should go back to the office that was handling this. Is this part of the recommendations that the National Assembly might want to put forward? And I also realized that earlier on you said, well, the National Assembly is not saying this is a failure, but the impact is still yet to be felt. So on one hand, would you be recommending that? And what are the areas are you hoping to be involved uh, with this particular program? Okay, um, thank you very much. First of all, we understand the limits of our office with regards to separation of power. We cannot tell the executive what to do in implementing their policies. We cannot tell them move it to the right or move it to the left. It's not, it's not our call to make. We acted based on the spirit and leather of section 88 and 89, which allows us to ask any question, like my colleague said here, Anybody we can ask question that has to do, you know, with the government business, the business of government, governance. So, and that, those questions were what we raised. It's unfortunate that we got the letter that we got from uh, Mrs. Ways, but that notwithstanding, our intention is to make sure that the essence of putting this intervention program, which was, which was a very wonderful idea from the president, that it gets to the people. And at the moment, it is not getting to the people the way it ought to get to the people. And money is being spent. You don't expect us not to ask questions when we appropriate 500 billion every year or close to that. And now that we have asked questions, we need answer. Whether it's coming from the minister, whether it's coming from um, um, uh, the person who was there before, it's irrelevant. The issue is let us know how this intervention will impact positively on the life of Nigerians who needs it most now. They need it most, and we will, that, that is our duty to do. 
We are the people's parliament. When they cry, we listen to them and we follow their uh, uh, cries. We follow their questions. So that's what we're asking for. So how the government will do their job is not for us to, we will not make recommendation. Okay. All we are promising Nigerians is that. We need to institutionalize this beautiful policy by creating statutory you know, uh, uh, backbone for it by bringing out laws, just like you have the Social uh, uh, Security Act and also the Unemployment Insurance Act. You know, we will create, and in doing that, there will be an opportunity for the public to come in through public hearing, to be able to air their view, like, like the um, uh, civil society organization. They will say, this Honorable is what Khalid, we have observed. Just a moment. Uh, we'll come to uh, the, the talk about the two-month electricity supply uh, much later, but I'd like to take the bus, this back to Mrs. Owais. By the way, you can join the conversation to our viewers on Twitter. Go to our Twitter handle at Sunrise Daily Now. There's a tweet for you, and we're getting uh, so much comment. If you're a beneficiary, if you have issues with the program or you have suggestions, let us know. So, Mrs. Owais, uh, well, on that tweet, a lot of people have been saying they've not been paid for the month of March. And, and we wonder, I mean, what could have been responsible for that? We know that it's not in your purview, but is that something that is even possible saying that, I mean, you get the funds that are needed per time. And also, I recall that last year, the wife of the president actually, you know, complained about this program. And this, this, she actually faulted the SIP, saying that she was expecting the social investment program, the 500 billion naira, to be utilized in a different method. And she said that she, she didn't know people that really felt the impact. So on one hand, I'd like to respond to that. So uh, apparently there were gaps in that. There were people that actually said they didn't feel the impact. How do you respond to that? Well, especially in the cash transfer program, I, I think um, it's, it's partly our fault because the communication has not been at, uh, at optimal because we really should um, have publicized more what we were doing. The people that we are reaching are people that maybe have radios. Um, for a journalist to go and engage them, is a, is, is, is a cost to the program. And if I have to give a journalist 100,000 to travel to maybe two or three communities, I'm calculating um, 20 women would be getting this 5,000 5, Naira from this 100,000. So because we didn't have all the funds that we required, we had to manage what we had. Um, of course, we realized later that we really needed to boost our communications. The particular category of people that we are impacting on are not people that have access to the media. The media has to go to them. This is the challenge. And they are not, you know, people that are visible on the landscape of anything. They're not people that are known and this is the problem. In the past, we've had social um, programs that go through particular people. So we ask certain people and they know now that, yes, this person is on the program or that person is on the program or I nominated or I have given 10 names or I've given 50 names. Unfortunately, that, w that was not my uh, directive this time. I was asked to go and meet people who didn't know anybody but who Des deserved to benefit as Nigerian citizens. Now that said, this data is actually available, but we have protocols for engagement. So for instance, in places like Gombe, they're doing a nutrition program. We know because of the kind of data we've, uh, we've, we've collated, we know all the families that have children um, or women that have children between the ages, uh, um, well, below the ages of five. It's a nutrition program. Uh, absolutely. So we just sort of uh, and give... If I may butt in, I, just, I want you to respond particularly to what the wife of the president said last year. Let me just give you a quote. She says that most of the northern states did not get the money. And she was referring uh, to the SIP. She says, I don't know. My state didn't get the money. And she was asking people around that, I don't know if your state got. So in that light, what happened then? I did, ad I did address that. I was saying that a lot of people don't know because these people are not visible on the landscape of our country. They are in faraway places and we didn't approach her. So I'm saying she w must have been misinformed. The information is available. We know the numbers in every state or we knew the numbers. I knew the numbers in every state and every month I prepared an update. 
and I submitted it. We had a brochure that we circulated. Um, I don't know, I, 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 after the incident, I gave her or I sent her a report of what we had. We, we did not ignore any state. It is not about North or South. It is about Nigerian citizens who deserve the benefits. So um, I guess because we're doing things differently, it's harder for people to appreciate what we're trying to do. Okay. Now, about the school feeding program, the Minister of Humanitarian Affairs did say that um, the program is riddled with intrigues. That's where the word came from. Uh, and then she also did say that there's discrepancy in the number of primary schools given by governors and the National Bureau of Statistics. So um, if all of, in spite of all the work that you did at that time, why do you think this still exists? Well, I don't know what she meant, you know, by the intrigues. It's like the question that was asked to the honorable member here. What are the gaps? What are the inconsistencies? But yes, um, early last, early in January 2019, we did get complaints that some of the numbers had been inflated. And I, I hope that you can call the statistician general, Dr. Yemi Kale. We had several meetings with him. We asked them and actually mobilized the NBS to go in and do a head count of children in all government primary schools. You see, when we began, we collected the information from the SUBEBs, the SUBEB chairs in every state. The school feeding program is peculiar in the sense that we are working with government primary schools. And these government institutions are at state level. They're, they're run by the governors. We are working with the Ministry of Agriculture, the Commissioner for Agriculture, because we're working, we're looking at the foods, the menu that they will eat. We're working with the Commissioner for Health because we're looking at the, um, the nutritional content. We're working with the Women Affairs. All of these are state structures. So we were compelled to work with the states to see how they can give us the information and ensure that there's sustainability. At the end of the day, we got farmers to aggregate and come together with the different kinds of foodstuff to give the um, cooks directly so that they are, the foodstuff is cheaper and more organic. It's fresh. All right, Madam, uh, one moment because we really need to begin to wrap up now. Uh, I'd like Honorable Ben Kalu to quickly respond to these issues before we take you up on one last thing. You want to respond to some of the things that uh, Mr. West has said? I don't know what is that. Uh, I didn't hear you, please. I don't know. I said, do, do you want to react to some of the things that she has said, you know, in the course of time right now? I want to react to some of the things she has said. You see, we should stop begging this question. The program is a wonderful program. But our concern is about the delivery. There is so much secrecy about the program. It needs to be more transparent. Telling us you cannot publish, the members of the National Assembly, they don't have the list, and we are entitled. Okay, if you don't publish it outside, we are entitled to know what you are doing based on Section 88 and 89 so that we can address the questions coming from the various constituencies. 360 of them that make up this federal republic. To treat it the way it is being treated, so much in secrecy, and complaints are coming, and we are asked to ignore it because of protocol. And sometimes I hear that is how the World Bank wants it. The World Bank directive cannot be more superior to our constitution. The supremacy of our constitution gave us the right to oversight, gave us the right to ask questions, gave us the right to do investigative uh, uh, you know, uh, 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 functions. We are not probing them at the moment. But if that need arises, I'm sure the relevant committees will invite them to ask, go through how the process was carried out for this number of years. We'll look at who are the people delivering this service? Who are the people they are sourced to? What is the administrative cost of this uh, uh, project? What is the salary? What is the overhead? Are we spending money running the program? Than, that is getting to the poor. These are the things we will discover in the course of our oversight and if we want to do investigative hearing. That is not what we are doing now. We want to make it clear to Nigerians that the National Assembly is not talking about themselves. They are talking about the downtrodden, the poor people. 
The money is not getting to them. Tell us how you are distributing it. It's not a All bad right. question. And we'll so, keep asking that question until we get answer. And the in answer other words, some legislative. In other words, we're going to have to get back to all of you and, and continue this conversation. Especially Nigerians also want to know the deal with the two-month free electricity. So that will also get back to you uh, and uh, some of your colleagues. But we have to thank you for coming on. Honorable Ben Cow is German House Committee on the Media. Uh, Mrs. Mary Mowes, Special Advisor to the President on Social Investment, and Charles Falao, Chairman, National Youth Reform Group. Lady and gentlemen, thank you all for coming on today. So we're back in a moment and take a look at your response. Stay with us. All right, welcome back. Uh, your response coming through Ibuku on Obanjo Fresh says, uh, if you want to benefit from public fund, you should be ready to be registered under the program. People file for unemployment in other claims for the same purpose. Well, this next one is from uh, D.Y. Ozove, saying the SIP, like Empire, is meant to ease the hardship of people. At a time like this, prompt payment to the beneficiaries is key. We have been witnessing delay in payments since the program was moved to a ministry. Today is the ninth, and the beneficiaries are yet to be paid. Let's skip the next one and go to your best coach, Amaslik86, says, I heard palliative was shared in Kwali Abuja. Kwali is just a microscopic part of Abuja. What about other people residing in Guagualada, Kubwa, uh, Gwari, actually, uh, Nyanya? Okay, I think we can take this uh, uh, Oyedo. Benga, I think uh, we can actually go to Benga now. It's, uh, it's the only way for Madam Owe's led committee to exonerate themselves is to simply publish the names of the beneficiaries. The legal side of it will be looked into later. That's yeah. from uh, Oyedari Benga. Mm, I, th I think this is a time that there's been a lot of questions about transparency. Remember the, you know, the list of people who have COVID-19? Yes, there's a law against that. But now we have the SIP people saying, let's see the names. Well, let's see where this next tweet comes from. Well, this one talks about... Um, Inside where? Yeah. Under, underprivileged. Yeah. Inside underprivileged. underprivileged? Yeah, that's where this one <laughs> talks. Oh, it says, that, thank you for bringing this Empower matter up today. It goes on to say the Empower, to our opinion, is a strategic plan to reduce income inequalities and inclusion of labor market outcomes. Shosanya Adekunle says, in my opinion, I don't think seven months of understudying is a good appraisal whatsoever. A rethink of fresh measures need to be adopted for transparency. And then Joseph Diary Alova says, I think there are interests against the SIP, the Miami Waste team, are trying their possible best, but the program can be expanded this time to capture those, what this? Gala, Gala and, and drink, drink sellers and traffic? <laughs> oh, okay. So there you go. That is it uh, today. Thank you all for your messages. Hey, keep those conversations going on because we'll be there as well afterwards. But we do thank you for watching and for sending in your comments. We'll see you again tomorrow. Mm. I'm Train Berlin. What's up? I'm Kyle. And I'm Ayo Makide. Please keep safe.